Hello, Average Engineers. Today I want to talk about yet another Substack post that I wrote that kind of blew up a little bit on LinkedIn, made some people mad. You know, that's what I like doing. The name of the post was called Redshift versus Snowflake versus BigQuery versus Databricks versus whatever. Why is the data warehouse battle still going on? Now I got a lot of reactions on LinkedIn from posting this probably because I said things that most people won't say, but I'll say and I'll write it and I don't really care and I think it's kind of funny. We'll talk about that today. It all started when I was messing around on Reddit reading the data engineering subreddit and there was some people whining and crying about data warehousing things like that and it just got me thinking a little bit it's kind of funny when that happens when you pump them out really quick like i did this post i just threw it out and wrote it really quickly threw it out and it's pretty popular so let's talk about this post so the idea kind of is here we have redshift snowflake bigquery databricks clickhouse whatever on and on i got all these data warehousing type tools that people argue about, people have their favorite, they're constantly fighting with each other, benchmarks, this, that, and the other thing. And part of my problem is that a lot of people get confused, especially new people about, you know, Databricks versus Snowflake versus BigQuery. And it's kind of, a lot of it's vendor-led confusion just because of their marketing. And people get confused between data lakes, data warehouses, lake houses, again, a lot of what's pushed by different marketing groups for these different tools confuses people. So I kind of just wanted to cut through all that and just tell people the truth. Generally speaking, when people are talking about data warehouses, they're talking about relational databases, something on SQL Server, Oracle, maybe Postgres or MySQL. That's kind of where it all started, Kimball data warehousing, modeling, book. You know, it's popular way back 20 years ago, the classic data warehouses facts, dimensions. Typically people associate that stuff with something like SQL Server, Oracle, right? Those big databases, although again, that happened, that change became that way and people connect relational databases to the word data warehouse because of in part vendors and what they're pushing. Kind of the next big thing after data warehouses with the data lakes and that was where people just dumped tons of files into S3, kind of like the cloud storage made the data lake kind of popular where you can just push JSON, Parquet, CSV files, dump them, flat files, whatever, into S3 and into cloud storage, typically S3, unless you're a weirdo on JCP and I call it a data lake, right? Because then all that data is dumped in there and people started using things like Glue and Spark and whatever else, Athena, to basically kind of take over what the data warehouse was doing you know they'd push all the files in this three and start doing analytics and things on top of that and kind of the data lake was that next thing that happened after the data warehouse it became popular and i think vendors saw popular that was and then today we have things called like the lake house for example and that is things like Delta Lake on Databricks, right? Sitting on top of files where you have like these big data systems and storage kind of like compute all mashed into one single thing like Snowflake, for example, right? And you can run stuff at scale and people call it the lake house. But why do they call it the lake house? Well, I mean, mostly it's the vendors saying that, right? They're trying to differentiate themselves from past data warehouses from certain technologies, you know, that when you say things like data warehouse, it makes certain things come to your mind, certain tools like SQL Server, for example, and you know, they're trying to differentiate themselves, all these vendors. So that's kind of where the lake house came in was people, you know, marketing people trying to teams trying to differentiate themselves from that classic old school data warehousing. But you know, what it really comes down to is if you want to call something a data warehouse, you can. For example, if you don't feel like doing bronze, silver, gold kind of nonsense stuff that they're teaching you, a lot of these marketing people and companies pushing that stuff, you don't have to. You can make your day out of data warehouse, whatever you want it to be. If you want to take Databricks and Delta Lake and you want to take your DDL and your schema and make facts and dimensions with staging tables, that's totally fine. I do that at the hundreds of terabytes level and it works great and it works totally fine. Now, what does that mean I have? Does that mean I have a data warehouse because I designed it and data modeled it like one? Or does that mean I have a lake house because I'm running it on Databricks with Delta Lake? I don't know. You tell me. The Databricks people would probably argue and say, hey, you're not doing it right. You should have 
bronze, silver, gold stuff. What are you doing with these facts and dimensions and staging tables? Well, it's like, you know, we've been data modeling like that for 30 years and it works great. And it works great on Delta Lake and Databricks too. It's fairly easy to understand and I really don't need to do it your way. I can do it my way if I want and it works fine. Um, and then the SQL Server people would probably tell me I'm wrong too, but you know, I still think in the end you can do it whatever you want with your data as long as you think about it, put some time into it, and design it correctly. I don't think you necessarily have to listen to what the vendors tell you you need to do. I think you should do what works for you and your team. Also, what kind of got people mad is I kind of listed out some stuff about each one of these tools and... I was kind of being facetious at the same time and kind of not. I was just saying people saying stuff that people think but don't say out loud. And what did I say? I said Redshift. You should never use Redshift. AWS Redshift. It's that's like five six years ago, man or more. Just it's expensive and you can equate it to basically an oversized and overpriced SQL Server. That's all it is. If you're an AWS shop and you've been using SQL Server and you want to kind of move into the data warehousing space big data, you can probably go to Redshift, but you'll probably regret it because it's a piece of junk and everybody knows that. I also said Snowflake is for DBT and SQL junkies who are like tweakers when they haven't written a SQL query in like the last 15 minutes. It's just basically people who are obsessed with SQL and that's all they know. They're bad programmers. They like burning money. Go ahead and use Snowflake. It's a great tool. BigQuery, I mean, it's just a joke. It's like for goody two-shoes and bamboozled ninnies who think GCP is the greatest thing ever when nobody else does. Nobody uses GCP and you got some weirdo saying, ah, BigQuery, it's awesome, man. I don't really know. It, it is not awesome. It sucks. It lacks three quarters of the features of the other tools. It's old and never changes and it doesn't have any market share whatsoever. It just, you don't need to be picking BigQuery. Pick something else. And last, of course, is Databricks. They're basically the best option. If you're smart, you'll pick Databricks and Delta Lake. It's unparalleled in features and options that they push out constantly, even more than Snowflake. It's a machine learning goat. It's for good programmers. SQL people can still use it because you have things like Spark SQL and notebooks, and you can run all the SQL you want, and it's basically the best option. What it boils down to is you can build whatever you want with whatever you want. Pick the tool that works for you and your team. It's less about the tool and more about the engineers and how they decide they wanna design and process the data with those tools. And you can do that with old and new tools and you can do that with a bad approach and a good approach. So just understand the trade-offs you're making for the tools you're using, ignore the marketing fluff and what's popular, just look at the tools, pick one, use it, use good engineering processes and you'll be fine. Thank you.